Well, how talking dictionaries are giving life to endangered languages. We got Stephanie Ilgen Fritz from the Science Desk here to tell us all about this. I guess the Health and Science Bureau. Yeah, the Science and Sense of anth Anthropology. That's right. There, there you go. Talking endangered languages. Um, it's 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 a scary thought that languages could be endangered. Yeah. And yet there are ways that we're trying to keep them alive. Yeah, the National Geographic Society has a program called the Enduring Languages, the Enduring Voices Project, and they have announced a new uh, dictionary that will uh, record the voices of some of these lost languages. There are something like 7,000, almost 7,000 languages in the world, and these linguist experts say that about half of them will probably die out by the end of the century as the last speakers in a, in a community die. And we've got some pictures here. Amazing. Yes. We've got pictures here of people who speak some of these rare languages. What can you tell us ab about them? I understand this this is Tito Perez, he's a shaman from the Chacamoco community in Puerto Diana, Paraguay. And um, we missed, th that so, was him before So they are actually going into these communities yes. and sort of and recording these th these languages before they're, before they're just lost forever. Yes, the, sometimes the languages are spoken by only a few hundred people and they the, they want to preserve the language for uh, for future generations and we can, there's a lot we can learn about the, the, the way these different languages have something to say about how people view their place in the world. And um, Papua New Guinea, Paraguay, Mongolia and Native American languages, these, there, there are dying languages all over the world and they went and, and, and painstakingly recorded the native speakers who are uh, able to, to ex explain the last vestiges of these languages. Where you can search, and so will you be able to search online, like tap, type in a word for some of these and sort of hear the words spoken in some of these uh, threatened languages? Yes, they do have audio files and you can in, for very specific words like uh, there's a particular Native American language where for the, to say go fishing it's one word and um, another language in Mongolia you have to say the word go you need to know the location and the direction of the nearest river and th then you can say the word go and if you don't you can't say it so you can hear how these words um, are actually said out loud. What, what I find interesting in this, is this fascinating story by, by Robert Lee Holtz um, is that um, they're also looking at some languages from my home country so we're talking about Irish Gaelic, yes. St Scottish Gaelic, Welsh, Cornish, Breton and Manx. I guess Breton is technically from France but it's just a hop. Um, anyway, that that's interesting to me because I've 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 been to I've been to Wales and I've heard people speaking Welsh. And he doesn't want to be endangered. That's interesting to him. <laughs> well, hopefully one hopefully I always feel ever endangered. completely die out. <laughs> right. But I mean, th these these are not like massively endangered. I know there are plenty of people who speak uh, Gaelic in the UK, right? Well, I suppose it, it, there's an advantage to getting some of these languages that are spoken by only a few people recorded before they're so endangered that it's hard to find that last native speaker. They're one of the languages that is recorded in this dictionary, there's only one native speaker alive. So there's an advantage to getting a, a, a conversation among a community also recorded, not just one speaker. And do they, the researchers feel there's sort of a resurgence of interest in this? I know there was a documentary out uh, within the last two years where they, um, the, the filmmakers tracked down some of these these, these languages that, will, that could soon be lost. And the film did very, very well. Did they, is there an appetite out there for just the general public, or are they more just doing this because they're scientists and they, this is their job and they want to make sure this isn't lost? Well, I can only say that when we've written about language issues before, there was a, there was a, a, a language that was discovered, a, the first newly recorded language in a long time, about a year and a half ago. And that was one of our more popular stories online that, at that time. So there's certainly an interest in and a fascination with languages, I think. Now, along with this, when they're recording the languages, are they also recording the stories and the tales and the folk tales of these native people? I know that the, the Brothers Grimm in Germany um, went to great effort to get right, right down those fairy tales which had been um, or orally um, passed down and they, they sort of got it down in the book. Is that happening for all these languages? I don't know how deeply they're able to get into some of that. Um, certainly when, when they describe what these words mean and how the sentence structure is put together, you, you, you learn things about the culture, like the fact that you need to to know your relation to nature around you in order to say certain things. Hmm. Great Interesting project. stuff. A great, great project. Great piece. You don't want to miss that. Read that on WSJ.com after you've watched the rest of the news. So thank you very much, Stephanie Ilgenfritz from the Health and Science Bureau.